Welcome to the Google Cloud Security Showcase, a special web series where we'll focus on security use cases that customers can solve with Google Cloud. My name is Aspen Cheryl, and I'm a Cloud Security Architect at Google. Today, we're discussing using dry run mode in VPC Service Controls, or VPCSC, our solution for preventing data exfiltration from managed services in Google Cloud. As with any security tooling, it's important to know what impact it will have on your environment before you enforce or modify a security control. With VPCSC's dry run mode, requests that violate a VPCSC perimeter policy are only logged, not denied. This lets you identify flows that need allow listed into or out of the perimeter, and once that's done, you can move the perimeter to enforce mode. Let's create a quick dry run perimeter. I'll go into VPC service controls and click into the dry run configs and make a new perimeter. This will be my data source perimeter, and I'll find and select my data source project as the scope for this perimeter. Next, I'll specify the services I want VPCSE to protect. Best practices is to protect everything, but I'm starting with just cloud storage. And I'll go ahead and create my dry run config. With my dry run config live, I can now start checking for logs or policy violations. You can reach Logs Explorer easily from the VPCSE homepage. My perimeter has been live for a little while now, so I'll go ahead and click on Go to Audit Logs. Two things to notice here. First is this query, so you can get a feel for filtering for VPCSE logs. The second is, notice there are no logs. I might be tempted to think that there are no violations, but not so fast. By default, VPCSC is configured at the org level, but enforced at the project level. When I jump from that org level config page to Logs Explorer, it keeps me at the org level context. Since it's enforced at the project level, I want to jump to my project to look for logs. I can now see my logs, and some key summary fields are displayed by default. I can also open the log file and expand the nested fields to see everything. Key items of interest are the authentication info, perimeter info, and request metadata for things like the caller IP, so who they were and what they were trying to do. If you notice that an identity is redacted, it's probably a user identity and is redacted for privacy reasons. If you need to unredact an identity, contact support for assistance. That said, the majority of requests in a production environment will be machine traffic, so service accounts. And as we can see in this log here, for example, those are unredacted. Once you start seeing violations, you can start doing discovery to identify legitimate flows that need allow listed. In my case, my violations were tied to importing data sources into a perimeterized bucket, which were then getting pulled into a Vertex search app in a different perimeter. I can then allow list flows I expect in and out of my perimeter, like I've done here. This is often an iterative process where you identify and allow list flows until you're no longer seeing unexpected violations. Then you're ready to move your perimeter to enforce mode. A couple things to be aware of here. First, Note that by default, every enforced config will have a corresponding dry run config. You can make and test changes to the dry run config before you push those changes to enforced. Let's say, for example, I want to expand my coverage and include the BigQuery API in my parameter. I can make that change in dry run, and notice how my dry run config says modified, meaning it's now different from the enforce config. The second thing to be aware of is dry run configs only log the delta between themselves and enforced, meaning the enforced configs are evaluated first and violations are logged. Then the dry run config is evaluated and any additional violations are logged. So right now, cloud storage is in both configs, but BigQuery is only in the dry run config meaning cloud storage violations will get logged by enforced, and only those new additional BigQuery violations will get logged by dry run. 
Again, dry run only logs the deltas. If I make a mistake, I could drop those changes, or if the modified config looks right, I can go through my process of checking logs, allow listing legitimate flows, and then roll that config out to enforced. I'm often asked what the best practice is for onboarding services and allow listing flows. And I recommend treating VPCSC very much how you treat your firewalls. With any firewall implementation, you need to know your flows. You need to know what the legitimate traffic patterns are so you can make rules for them accordingly. Likewise, VPCSC should become part of your infrastructure as code or IAC pipelines and business processes. So developers often need to handle resource provisioning and have processes for things like getting IAM set up, their firewall rules made, all these other things when they spin up a new app. So make VPCSC just another part of the process. In summary, using dry run mode lets you validate how a VPCSE perimeter will impact your environment, and it lets you evaluate changes before pushing them to the enforced config. To learn more about VPCSE, watch our other videos or visit our product pages here.